Well, hey there, folks. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome to my bee yard here in southeast Louisiana. Remember, folks, this is not a how-to video. I don't do how-to videos. I do how I do videos. It's just a vlog. So, anyway, good to be back. I know it's been a while since I've had a video. Uh... The last two were actually, um, they were actually taken before Christmas, and then I went on vacation. We ended up, uh, you know, with everything going on in the world, we weren't able to have our get-together on Christmas Eve, so we went ahead and left, and uh, we had ourselves a white Christmas up in North Georgia. Man, it was pretty. Take a look at these pictures. Another treat I had on the way up there was I got to meet a faithful subscriber, a subscriber that's been on uh, on my channel since the very beginning, and that was Don Beard, and I got to meet him in Alabama, and it was pretty cool getting to meet him. We're a really nice guy, and Don, <clears throat> I'm sure you're watching. It was an absolute pleasure to meet you, and uh, I hope you guys and you, Don, had a uh, a good time at the uh, at Cayman Reynolds' conference. Man, I would have loved to have went to that. He had some really good stuff lined up. But it just wasn't in the cards for me. We'd already had the vacation in North Georgia planned. And we didn't get back until literally last week. and uh, Which was um, the 4th of January. And uh, I just couldn't take back off on the second week. Because I was right there. And the registration was still open. And there were spots. And I just I couldn't go. I just couldn't miss three weekends in a row with things going on. And, and I didn't want to miss uh, church again here <clears throat> at my home church. So... Uh, we decided we needed to go ahead and stay here, and we couldn't make it. But, uh, man, if it had been next weekend or the weekend after, I, I probably would have went on up there. But anyway, I hope that was a great success. I haven't heard much about it yet because it's just wrapping up, and uh, I'm sure I'll find out. But I'm sure it was a good time with the vendors and the speakers and everything he had going on. So, But anyway, today it is kind of, well, the sun's trying to come out, but it was a beautiful sunny day yesterday, but it didn't get above 50. Um, uh, although... I did see a few bees flying out of my top bar. Um, today, right now, it's about 42, and that's as high as it's going to get today. I think it, it might reach 45. But we've got some really consistently cold temperatures, and you've heard me say it before, I like that. I like it when the bees can stay clustered in their hives and come out on some warm days just to cleanse, and which they don't really do a lot of cleansing flights because it's not hold up that long. Um, so their cleansing flights are quick and in a hurry. Uh, most of the time, they're going out looking for stuff that's not there. Although I'm starting to see some wild mustard. But it is, um, it's nice when they can stay clustered in there and not burn as much energy. Just burn the energy needed to, to uh, remain warm in the cluster. Uh, went through and took a look at all the hives. As far as um, listening to them and, and wait. And basically this is what I do. So you've seen me do this before. All I do is I, I basically put my ear to the hive. I hear bees, I pull my brick, and I lift it up, and this is good and heavy. It's, you really put two fingers back there, then you really know it's heavy. So as we look around at my yard, basically a hive that's got a brick turn like this for now means it's light. And this one was pretty light. I'll say that, it's, no, it's got some weight. I don't know why I've marked it quite that light, but it basically needs watching. It needs, it needs uh, monitoring. We don't want it to get too light. Then the nuke here, it seemed like it was very, very top heavy. So bottom line is the, the bees have probably already moved up. This is depleted and probably empty. Nothing left in it. And it's all the honey's up top. So we've got to watch them. Because when your bees get to the very top and it's still, say, February, you could be in trouble. Because they're running out of food and nothing really begins to bloom until mid-March and April. And I mean bloom heavily. There's a little bit out there. And then, of course, the regular brick, we're good and heavy. And if you look across, 
these were all heavy nukes were good and i said four maybe one up front was oh yeah there's four one two those two are light so we'll have to watch those keep an eye on them but everything else looked good with them didn't check the ones at the uh dairy down at the pond but uh i checked them before i went on vacation and they seemed pretty heavy and everybody was alive and so I went through them all, and uh, it was good. Everybody was buzzing. Everybody's alive, um, including the top bar. And we'll go take a look at that right now. Check this out. So let's take a look over here at the old top bar. Like I said, they were flying in and out the other day. Just a few bees, not a lot. Um, but it had gotten up to around 45 to 50, and they were coming out. Uh, we usually got a couple of roaches in here. Yeah. No, no roaches. But... They're clustered. So no, yes, the uh, other day when it was 60, they were all over on this comb. But you see, this comb has no bees. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. And then there's a cluster over here. Oh, it, it is warm. Wow, that's a difference. That is interesting. You can feel it with the back of your hand. That is seriously warm. I've never done that before. Wow, and it's cool over here. It's pretty amazing. So they're clustered. And as I said, it's pretty cold. So. Uh, they're not moving, they're not flying right now. It's, uh, it was 42 when I walked out. Of course the sun, it was shining right on this when they decided to fly. And everywhere else it was, you know, a lot cooler in the shade. So they, uh, they took advantage of the sun and came out and did a little flying. Not many of them, but hey, they're alive. And uh, it's heavy as well. And yeah, so the top bars, it, it's moving and shaking. But uh, all the hives also were heavy except for four. And now I know which ones I need to really keep an eye on. I'm suspecting they'll last to the end of the month at least. Uh, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do uh, brood chamber reversals or not this year. Um, I went some years I did them, some years I haven't. But uh, nonetheless, I will make sure and check them again at the end of January. They're, they're, they still got a little bit of weight to them. But some of those highs are super heavy out there. So I can always wait for a warm day maybe move some frames of honey over. I'd really rather do that then put dry granulated sugar on top, what they call the mountain camp, uh, whatever they call that, mountain camp. I don't like doing it. It's emergency feeding. I do it when I have to. I did it last year. I don't like to do it. So if I can move honey, that'd be even better. It's better for them uh, as far as having that capped honey they can move on top of, as far as I understand anyway. But everybody was heavy, everybody was alive, except for those four hives, of course. The nukes that were so light, uh, that I felt were light, uh in one of the videos a ways back well they were um they were still pretty heavy and i guess i always got to remember and tell myself and remind myself when you feel a nuke you've just got done feeling double deeps and when you feel the nuke you may feel like it's light but as long as it's got you know 20 pounds of honey they're gonna be fine because what we always what we always have to remember is a nuke is uh it's much less populated than uh, a double deep so it's a smaller colony it doesn't need as much food so they haven't eaten through as much so that's a good thing so actually they're doing fine uh, we're gonna have to take a look at those four doubles and other than that everybody's still rolling anyway I haven't been in my house since the last video where I was in my house when was that I don't remember which one that was but I don't go in them at all once I set them up for fall or for winter Late fall when I'm done, whatever that last time was where I did an assessment, that's it. Uh, I'm done. I don't go in them. Even in warm winters, I don't go in them. I surely don't go in them in the cold winters. Um, and here's my thought process on that. Not because you can't. I mean, you surely can. In the 40s, you can open a hive. Uh, I, you know, and I know they seal it with propolis, and they'll, they'll reseal it on a warm day, and it'll get fixed. That's not the reason, because I'm afraid of breaking the propolis, although I don't think that helps things, because they do things for a reason. But they don't go in them because, first of all, and that's really the first time on that top bar I've ever uh, felt heat. That was amazing. But I don't believe in popping the top just to let all that heat that they've worked so hard to build up out because heat rises and allow good humid air back in there just to throw it back on top of them just to look at them. There's no reason to look at them in my opinion. Now, I'm not speaking about commercial guys getting ready for pollination. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm not, or, or whatever, whether it's almond pollination, blueberries pollinate early, 
whatever it is I'm not talking about that I'm talking about as a hobby beekeeper I see no reason for people to be breaking their hives open right now but to each his own if they want to that's their business I don't do it um, because again here's my thinking if they're clustered and even if they are moving up the top if they're sick because I treated them when it was cold if they're if the mites aren't off of them or they're already sick there's nothing you're gonna do anyway basically if they're sick they're sick there's not much you're gonna do if you open them uh, all you're gonna do is cause them to break a cluster even on a warm day I don't see a reason to break them open because they were queen right when you put them up if they're not queen right something went wide right somehow uh, if, if, there's just nothing you can do for them at this point in time they're either there or they're not if they went queenless you're not gonna get a queen you're not gonna make them queen right uh, I guess you could combine them if it's a warm day but uh, that would mean an inspection you wouldn't do all that so I I don't I don't see a benefit of opening them up and doing anything with them at this point because they're either gonna make it or they're not at this point now if they're light why then sure I'll pop the top and I mean they're really light I'll pop the top and throw a piece of newspaper on put a shim on pour some sugar on that newspaper and uh, put the lid back on that's emergency feeding I don't like to do that as I said but I'll do what I have to do to keep them alive but other than that if they're if they've got some weight to them and they're maintaining and they're buzzing I, I mean am I wrong I don't know I, I don't see a reason to open them what do you, what can you possibly uh, do for them out, outside of putting some emergency feed on them I'm also not talking about those guys in a in a uh, in an area that's like say South Florida or down the Bahamas or in Jamaica or whatever that's a different story um, and that's why a lot of commercial beekeepers overwinter their hives in climates like South Texas and South Louisiana and South Florida because they do have to get them ready for pollination they do have to get them ready for uh, brood nests expansion and things of that nature so that's why they have them in the south and there are some northern beekeepers that do it too don't get me wrong so they have their reasons but as a hobby person I don't, I don't see there's there's not much you're going to do for them right now uh, I just don't see a reason so I don't touch my hives no reason to unless they're emergency feed hopefully we don't have to do that but I think I'm gonna have to do that on about two or three possibly four I haven't checked the ones at pond but I think just these out here we'll see all right, guys, before we go any further, just want to remind you, if you do like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to push that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Because, you know, everybody needs to be notified of something. Why not a bee video? All right, guys, let's get going. So, what am I going to do today? Well, it's, since it's so cold and the bees aren't flying, I'm going to go ahead and render wax. Um, I, if I can remember which I, I probably won't be able to find it. I, I might link it up top. Um, I would show you the... the video it was I think I can find the video I'll link it if I can remember but it was way way um, back at the midpoint of the season and I was talking about how I saved my wax I do save my wax and uh, while wow, the Sun came out it's nice but uh, I save all my little burr comb that I peel off most of the time you will see me throw it here and there but for the most part I save it early in the season when there's a lot of it and it actually ends up being quite a bit and I'm gonna show you today what I collected over one season and why I say don't toss your wax off to the side hobby guys that's a tip I mean I guess that's me saying a how-to thing I'm just giving you a, a scenario where I find that I end up with a nice sheet of wax sometimes it's only about that thin and maybe the size of a wash pot but wax is gold and any amount you can save I'd save it and I watch some of the guys I mean they just scrape it off and throw it off and maybe they just got plenty of wax or they don't care or they do it a different way or maybe they don't re-wax stuff and just buy new again to each his own that's how folks do it but I don't I save every bit I can and uh, that's what I do so um, it works out and it saves me a little bit and every little bit counts if I get two or three sheets like that that'll I'll wax 40 50 foundations and that's money saved in my book keep my little operation here in the black and that's one of the ways I try to do it is just try my best to uh, save as much as I can now, I did buy some uh, recently I bought a big block because uh, I just wanted to have some on hand and I know who the beekeeper was I, tell you, I mean it was Bob Benny I was at his store and I did buy some because I trust his his products and uh, I went ahead and bought a block of wax actually I bought two blocks of wax from him just to have on hand should anything happen when I had all my hives killed 
Um, and still never found out who did that. Uh, state inspector, everybody was involved with that one. But anyway, uh, it's still a sore spot for me. Um, I was able to salvage some equipment that I didn't have to throw away uh, due to possible poison. And I ended up going through a ton of, and it, a ton of wax. It wiped me out of wax. So just to have a few extra, you know, just to have an extra 15 pounds or so or 20 pounds, um, I decided to keep it on hand. So let's go out here and um, get some wax going. And uh, we got to take some boxes and air them out that had wax crystals in. Still haven't done that yet. I need to get that going because I want to use them in April. And uh, take a look at a few other things. So when I run into my wax, I do like everybody else does. Nothing different. Nothing special. I just I get a uh, little bit of water going. So I got about three inches of water in there. And then let me show you the wax. All right, this is stuff I scraped off of old frames and this old uh, comb that was... It's no good anymore, just getting dark or broken or whatever. I'm gonna scrape that off. Same with this. This was some more old scraped up junk right here. But this giant bag, pretty much, except for these two top pieces, all that down there is burr comb and garbage that I scraped while inspecting. Scraped off the bottom of frames. Two pieces on top are that was off of part of part of that stuff but so basically from about here down it's all burr comb all that's burr comb man save that stuff it's not going to generate a ton but it's going to have it's going to have a significant amount that you can use later that's my opinion on it Did I put too much in there, you ask? Absolutely, I always do. I'm just impatient. Now, one thing I will tell you is that's all old brood comb and nasty stuff and whatever, broken stuff. I still got a few pieces of black comb that I'll hold on to and I'll use those in swarm traps and all that because there's nothing better uh, in a swarm box than old comb. But that's what I use for hive maintenance. It's darker yellow. I don't use it for my candles or lip balm or anything. Uh, I got one more bucket left of capping wax that I've yet to melt, and when I melt that, that'll be what I use uh, for all my all of my uh, uh, candles and such, and the stuff that I sell by the pound. Gonna get this done, and while I'm uh, while I'm waiting for that to get right and stir it up and get ready to strain it and all that, I'll go ahead and do something else while I got time. And hey, the sun's out now all of a sudden. Maybe it'll get up to 50. Well, we got a little boil, so we're going to turn it down. What is this? Piece of paper? Anyway, well, that's what we're looking at. I don't know what that is. That old piece of paper. Get that out of there so it don't clog up my strainer. So, since it's such a nice day, it is pretty out. Uh, the sun came out, so that really makes all the difference in the world when it's cool. Uh, we're actually expect, expecting maybe a wintry mix, possibly sleet. Don't think we're going to get any snow, though. Uh, probably about 45 minutes north of here is expecting some snow. But it is a pretty day, and while we're allowing that wax to melt on down, why not build a few frames? So I got this old jig, and you can build jigs so easy. You ever? I tell you a guy that made a nice jig for putting boxes together, and you can use a similar principle to making a frame jig, is uh, Duck River Honey up in Tennessee. Really smart guy, but he built him a nice jig. I really like this jig, but I had bought this one after I had an old man make one. Kelly B sold this. Well, of course, Kelly B's has been bought out. First year they were bought out, they didn't offer this anymore. Now I see Man Lake is offering. This is a nice jig. It does shallows and deeps, of course. All of them do, I think. All that I've seen do. But uh, I can't build too many frames because I just realized. I'm out of inch and a half staples. This is the last strip I got plus what's in the staple. And of course, I hauled everything out before I checked. But I may make a run later just to have some for this week. But I figure I'm going to get a few things done while I'm waiting for wax to melt. So I don't get in a hurry with it. Because 
are still early on. It's when I've got swarms calls coming in and bee business going on and it's spring and we're rolling. That's when I'm in a hurry. But anyway, take this little padded thing and slam it against here. Same on this side. Ah, man, I got the sniffles out here and it's cold. I got 10 in there? Yeah. And uh, see them in there and they stay nice and stay put. pull these springs back off of here again and you can usually just lift them right out there you go There we go. So I'll put that in the barn overnight. Like I say, there's probably an yeah, inch, or like a half inch or so of uh, wax in there. Maybe three quarters. Not depend. Yeah, maybe that. Because there's, there's probably at least four inches of water. We'll see. But it still wax ahead. And it really took... Uh, 30 minutes. Hi right, folks, so it's uh, this next day. I figured I owed it to you to at least show you what came out as far as this wax rendering. And it is, for this southern Louisiana boy, freezing cold out here with the wind blowing. It's damp, it rained, and it's in the 30s. And I'm gonna do this real quick and get back in. Huh, a little bit more than I thought. That's a good amount. Get all that sludge off. And then the rest of that gray stuff is be propolis. All right, here's our finished product. Rinsed off and cleaned. That's just propolis is what they tell me. And some of it's still some debris, but I can scrape that down a little finer. But I'm not going to do it right now. Just wanted to give you an idea of what we got and why it's worth to me, to me, to save your wax. A couple... Frames I scraped and uh, a bunch of burr comb. Boom. Could only build 30 frames um, because of the staple situation. I had run out. Didn't think I, didn't think I was out, but I was out. So hey, hey, I did 30 frames. Now I only got 270 to go instead of 300, right? Hey, anything's better than nothing. So the last thing I want to do is um, take all my deep body boxes that have uh, brood comb in them that I stored with um, moth crystals. And you saw a video. I'll put the link up top for that. But uh, I'm going to bring them out here so they can air out for the next couple months. Uh, once it begins to get warm again, well, then we'll be using them. So hopefully uh, we don't have a wax moth problem. But I want to air it out. I want that stuff out of there. Um, a follower, a subscriber uh, named Rebecca did tell me that the uh, active ingredient is not actually toxic. Or I shouldn't say that. It's toxic. She said it was actually... Um, Organic compound, so that was good to know. I didn't know that. See, that's what the comments and all are good for. Uh, and I read them all. Um, while my channel is as small as it is, I'm able to read them all, at least answer everybody for now. So that was good, and I thank you, Rebecca, for that information. That stuff, uh, that stuff that when we all get together, we learn from each other. So, good call. Anyway, I'm going to stack these out. Now, remember, we had wax moths in that video where she commented and told me about that. And I left them out to freeze before I went on vacation. Take a look at these little suckers now. Yeah, they froze. See, before you could break them open and they'd go to crawl around. But 
they withered into nothing. This box was on the bottom. Moth crystals. Ooh, it's, it smells. So you can smell them. But see, on the outside of some little bit of mold, the moth crystals. Of course, I just tore that up. But this is, has still pollen. Has some bee bread in it. You know, you can see where the bee bread was, and it's uh, it's fine. You're seeing these as I'm seeing them. It's the first time I pulled these out. Old queen cells. Look at this. This was a swarm hive. So this was a hive that I lost in the summertime that obviously swarmed and didn't requeen. But yeah, there we go. That's proof in the pudding. So let me get the rest of this stuff stood up. We can we're gonna put it just like that where the air can get through it um, and just kind of air it out over the next few months. Hi folks, that is it for today. Um, just a little something to do on the afternoon when there's not much else going on with the bees. Again, everybody's alive. We're happy about that. Everybody is pretty much heavy except for a few hives, and we'll watch those guys until uh, or those gals until um, end of January. And uh, just went ahead and got a few tedious little tasks done. Um, got that wax render, so that's out the way. Can't really do that when it's hot outside because uh, the bees are flying, and once they smell it, they just they're all over the place and. So uh, all we have left is a little bit of wax to render that's um, capping wax. And I do that a little more gently so uh, I don't brown it or burn it or anything like that. Um, but anyway, we'll be doing that soon. <sighs> Got a lot more frames to build, but I need to go get some staples. Um, and frames are on sale right now too, so I got to get a few more boxes of those. Who knows, might have about 400 to build. But we'll see. Uh, I want to get some fresh equipment, get some stuff waxed in. I got these hives right here that are going to a friend. Um, he bought them from another lady. I'm just kind of the middleman, and we're going to wax up some of those foundations are uh, bone dry. So we've got a few little tasks and projects going on. Not terribly, terribly behind on being ready for the season, and I may very well be reversing hive bodies um, in end of January. I don't know. I don't always do that, but uh, I do like to reverse them so that when the bees are all moved up to the top and I've got empty comb in the bottom, I can go ahead and remove some of that really black, black comb, replace it with some newer comb. Um, not foundation at that point because they're just not going to build at that point. And feeding them when it's still getting down, you just, it's not good to feed them and introduce that moisture into the hive if it's getting down into the 30s at night. Trying to, and they're not going to build that comb that early on anyway. So uh, we'll replace it with some newer comb, cycle out some of that old stuff. And then what that does is puts an empty brew chamber on top so that as February progresses and the queen begins to really get more and more, uh, uh, lay more and more, she'll have the chance to go ahead and just move right on up and be able to get a full brood nest. And that makes that hive, in my opinion, it makes that hive uh, a little more robust when it's time to split. So splits coming up in about two months. Wow, amazing. All right, guys, I appreciate everybody watching. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful evening. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. Have a great one.